Hello and welcome to our beginner series for V-Ray for Maya. In this video, I'm going to guide you through the V-Ray physical camera. I'll demonstrate how to adjust white balance and exposure, and how to add realistic lens effects to your images. Take a moment to download our project files linked in the video description so you can explore the scene in your own time. Now let's get started. The first step is to create a camera. This can be done by duplicating existing cameras like perspective, top, front, side, etc. or by selecting create cameras and then choosing camera. Once the camera is created, we can activate the resolution gate and the film gate from the viewport toolbar. This ensures we're aware of the exact size of the rendering frame. Within the camera settings, we can modify attributes like the angle of view or the focal length. A higher focal length value results in a narrower field of view, while a lower value offers a wide-angle view. Let's start the IPR to delve deeper into the camera settings. Our next step is to add a physical camera attribute. This can be done by selecting Attributes, then V-Ray, and finally, Physical Camera. Then if we scroll all the way down, we can expand the extra V-Ray attributes rollout, and that's where we'll find our physical camera attributes. From here, we can select the camera type, be it for still shots, movies, or video, and then set the appropriate exposure. As you can see, the default exposure is way too dark, so we basically don't see anything in the render view. The exposure can be adjusted using three parameters, the F number, shutter speed, and ISO. These three need to be in perfect balance to achieve the right exposure for your shot. Since our shot is way too dark, I can increase the ISO significantly to brighten it up. If I increase the ISO number to 10,000, for example, you can see that it brightens up a little bit. Alternatively, instead of physical exposure, we can opt for exposure value. This single value controls our shot's exposure. Higher values darken the scene, while lower ones brighten it up. Next, we have the white balance attribute. We can choose a white balance to make the image look colder or warmer, or we can go for a more neutral white balance. As an alternative to setting the camera manually, we can use the auto camera exposure and auto white balance settings in the V-Ray render settings. This way, we can let V-Ray do the work for you. To use these settings, first, open the render settings. Navigate to overrides and then access the camera rollout. Here, you can activate both the auto exposure and auto white balance. For these settings to function correctly, it's essential to have the light cache GI enabled. To view the results interactively, Activate the light cache within the IPR. Navigate to the last tab labeled IPR and under the shading rollout, ensure the light cache option is selected. Once you initiate the render, you'll see that V-Ray determines an exposure value and white balance on its own. For now, I'll deactivate these to explore more camera settings. The next thing we can do is to enable the vignetting effect, which will focus the viewer's attention towards the center of the image. The depth of field option, when enabled, initially blurs the entire scene. To set a focus point, right-click in the VFB, select Set Focus Point, and click within the VFB. This focuses the camera on the selected point. The image might appear overexposed, so adjusting the EV can compensate for that. A lower F number results in a shallow depth of field, blurring most of the image. Our focus is on the white train in the middle of the image, we can also simulate motion blur by enabling the motion blur option. To see this effect, we need to have some moving objects in our shot. For example, I've animated this train, so if I scrub the timeline here, you can see it moving. So if we go on frame 30 and render, you can see a little bit of motion blur going on on the white train. If we'd like to make this effect stronger, the shutter speed can be reduced. A lower value keeps the shutter open longer, resulting in more motion blur. So. If I go for a really low number in the shutter speed, like 5 for example, you notice that the train is much blurrier than before. One difference between the different camera types is that the movie camera uses a combination of shutter angle and shutter offset for controlling motion blur, and the video camera uses a latency value. Lastly, we'll explore lens effects. Double-clicking on the right handle opens the layer panel, revealing lens effects. Activating the bloom and glare layer immediately introduces lens effects around light sources. We can adjust the size and intensity of these lens effects. We can also add more effects to it, like lens scratches, which will simulate that the lens of the camera has been scratched, or lens dust, 
which will simulate that dust has accumulated on the lens, resulting in some interesting effects. By now, you should have all the fundamentals of the V-Ray physical camera in Maya. Make sure you take a look at the rest of the videos from our Getting Started series. I hope you found this tutorial useful. See you soon.